Bubba would have to Zane. You, you know, Felicia's staying at Vincent. How is she? Well, they say she's trying to be brave, but she's got to be torn up inside. Everybody else is. I know what you're all thinking. You think it's my grandfather's fault that Zane is dead. Marley, I've been looking all over for you. I've got to go. Where? See my grandfather? I'm going to do to him what he did to my mother. You're sure he has the deed? Yes, keep in contact. How could you let this happen? What? It's unbelievable. What is father? Michael Hudson has purchased the Love Stables. Uh, right. Uh, no, I can explain that. There is no possible explanation. How did you allow that? How did you let that filthy stable boy own my land? Are you sure that thing is set for gold? Any non-ferrous metal. Anything under an ounce will set this thing off. How about gold dust? Yep. Well, I don't get it. We have searched and x-rayed every inch of this place. Where could it be? That doesn't make any sense. Look, I mean, we gotta nail Reginald Love, and we gotta do it soon. Yeah, because I can't keep him in Bay City much longer. And then all of our work will have been for nothing. Michael, what if he's telling the truth? What if there were no shipments of gold to these stables? Adam, we saw the records. Look, he claims he has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, like heck he doesn't. He controlled this just like he hired the guy who killed Zane Lindquist. Felicia, why don't you go upstairs and get some rest? We don't have to be at the chapel for a couple of hours. I just have a few more things that I want to say. Honey, you haven't gotten any sleep. I know, but I'm fine, really. Maybe Mac could think of something to say. No, I really want to do this myself. Rachel, do you remember when I married Zane? We, we said our own vows. We never said till death do us part. I feel like he's still with me. I feel like this is the most important thing I've ever written. It is not your fault. If right? I'd just been honest with everyone when Cecile first started calling you me. You couldn't possibly have known it was. I should have known. Kev, you have to stop blaming yourself. You're right. Cecile is the one responsible for all of this unhappiness. I tell you, if I hear that woman's voice again, I swear I'm going to kill. Hello? Cass, darling, how are you? Well, aren't you even going to say hello? You got a lot of nerve calling me here. Who is it? Who do you think? Look, this will just take a second. I just wanted to ask you a teensy little favor. Oh, I am warning you, Cecile. Now, Cass, I know you're mad about the other night. Mad is not the word for it. Hey, I had nothing to do with that man, the, cr the crazy man with the gun. That's a lot of bull, and I'll tell you something else. You may have diplomatic immunity, but you don't have immunity from me. And boy, do I have plans for you. Don't want to ruin our surprise. You talk to her. Hello, Cecile. Kathleen? Uh-huh. Oh, good. You're just the person I want to talk to anyway. Make it quick. Uh, it's about that jacket you borrowed from me. I I'd like it back. I don't think so. Kathleen. It's so warm and, and comfy, you know, especially with all those diamond certificates sewn into the lining. Kathleen, you have no use for that. Really? Well, I seem to recall that uh, it says something like property of the bearer or something like that. They don't belong to you. Well, as they say, uh, possession is nine-tenths of the law. Don't play cute with me. Goodbye, Cecile. They're mine, and I'm coming over there to get them right now. Go ahead. None of us is going to be here. We're all going to a funeral. You're not going to get away with this, McKenna. Oh, yes, I am. This and much, much more. <sighs> She certainly has a lot of nerve. Don't worry about it. We're going to take care of Cecile. Robbie, I can't depend on the people. If I could just get that jacket back from Kathleen before I go. Is she being difficult about it? 
Oh, I just didn't like the way they sounded on the phone earlier. Robbie, you don't think that Cass could do anything to me, oh, do you? Oh, no. No. He cannot touch your highness. Why don't I believe you? You are protected. I have taken care of everything. Is there something you're not telling me, Ravi? Your Highness, do you not trust me? Well, I don't know, Ravi. You have been acting a little weird lately. I have to care about your diplomatic immunity. Yes, you did. That's true. And I've stood by your side after everyone has deserted you. Come on, Ravi. We both know you're loyal to whomever's in power. But I have seen to it that you are back in power, my queen. How could you doubt my loyalty? Okay, fine. Sorry, Ravi. Fear not, my queen. We will get out of here. We will restore your crown and your empire. Not so fast, Ravi. We're not out of the woods yet. Reginald Love is still on the loose, and I have another appointment with the police this afternoon. Between Love, Winthrop, and that Adam Corey, I'll be lucky to get out of Bay City in one piece. I think if there's anyone who can get Reginald to tip his hand, it's Cecile. We can use her to put a little pressure on old Reggie. Oh, I think that's definitely the best idea. What's the matter? Michael, we're running out of time. I know. We might lose the only chance we have to put the vulture behind bars. Look, we got all the elements of a perfect hand if we could just play our cards right. <laughs> I'm sure Reginald would appreciate your analogy. You know, I think I'm gonna have one more crack at old Reggie. Only this time, I think he's gonna be surprised. Well, wait up, buddy. I can't wait to see this guy squirm when you tell him about the Love Stables. You mean the Hudson Stables? Yeah. Our family stables. How could you let Hudson get his hands on that? The deed was in Donna's name. So you let your irresponsible sister do whatever she pleases? There was nothing I could do to prevent it. By the time I'd heard about it, it was too late. The papers had already been signed. And you didn't even put up a fight. Give me a break, Father. What was I supposed to do? From now on, you can handle love family affairs with a little more strength and aggression. I have been When I our... was here, I handled this family's affairs with an iron fist. And look at you, weakling, a failure. You let Hudson walk all over you. I can assure you, had I been in charge of those stables, Hudson would never have gotten near them. But you're the one who gave them to her. It was in your will. And for a very good reason. So she would never forget the foolish thing she did with that stable boy. And what good has it done you? Now she sees that stable boy nearly every day. Yes, Donna has been a terrible disappointment to me. Both of you have. Me? Look, I have held this family together. All these years, even without any money, because you took it away from us. You had the love name. You should have been able to earn your own fortune with it. Oh, a lot of good that did me. Because you're a failure, a disgrace to the family. What do you know about families? You deserted this one. Then you locked up all our money in a Swiss account. Your first mistake was turning over the finances to Donna. Couldn't you be a man? Take on some responsibility sometime. Father, you have never understood me. You have never been fair to me. You have never given me a chance. Do you really think you deserve one? Yes. I believe I do. And I know that I can make you proud of me. You think so? Well, I'm going to let you prove it. How? You can start by taking care of Michael Hudson. Or is that uneducated muck shoveler too tough a match for you? Not at all. I'll get those stables back for you. A welcome home present. I would like that, Peter. You have no idea how much those stables mean to me. This part of another world is brought to you by Always Plus, the new maxi with a new shape and feminine protection. It protects you and your clothes with a unique dry weave covering. You have no 
idea the things this man has done. First he separates Donna and Michael, and then he takes Victoria away. And now it's back, he's back, and it's all starting over again. Somebody has to put a stop to this. It doesn't have to be you. Then why don't you just let the police take care of it? Because I can't. All right, I can't. Somebody has to put an end to this man. Whatever your grandfather did has nothing to do with you. You didn't even know the guy, Marley. I don't understand, Jake. He's my family. Nancy, is this okay? Um, you know, for the funeral. Yeah, you're just a bit early, Dee. I know. I, I can't help it. I keep pacing up and down. I, I just keep thinking about Zane. Scott, hey. What's his problem? I guess the mood around here must be contagious. I'm worried about Vince. He's real upset about Zane. Guess we all are. That I can understand. It's the rest of it that bothers me. What, Eddie? The anger. You mean you think that he's... It, yes, I think. I know. It's it's there. It's just under the surface. We're going to stick close to him today. Okay, so Reginald Love didn't actually pull the trigger. He never does. One thing's for sure. He's certainly very careful to cover his tracks. Yeah, just like he was with your mother. Oh, Pops, we don't know that for sure. I know that. Will you relax? I can't relax. Reginald Love is back. It's all starting again. There's got to be some way to stop that man. Hey, Pops. You know how you always tell me to have a little faith? Well, now I'm telling you, have a little faith. You just... You can't get away with it again. Pops, believe me. Adam Corey will take care of Reginald Love. Look, I can handle Reginald Love alone. Come on, look. You know how much I want to see this. I also know something about questioning people. Michael, you show up there and this guy is going to hit the roof. Now, that's the last thing we want right now. You're right. So let's just play it cool for the time being, all right? Come on, I'll call you. Brittany. Hi, Brittany. What's up? Um, I was just going to check on Betsy's sore leg. I see. You always dress like that when you come down to the stables, check on the horses? I'm ready for the funeral. How's things up at the house? The atmosphere kind of tense? Yes. How's Donna doing? She locked herself in her room. Reginald Love, he really turned everybody's life upside down. Including mine. You were very close to Zane. Yeah. Such a good man. He saved my life. I almost drowned. And he got me back on my feet. And he never asked me for anything. <sighs> he would never have come to Bay City if it hadn't been for me. Oh, Brittany, there's always chance. I don't believe in chance, and I hate the loves. I hate all of them. <sighs> Brittany, are you okay? It's nothing you can help me with, Michael. Nothing anybody can help me with. Okay. I'm going to go upstairs and change for the funeral. If you need anything, anything at all, you call me, all right? Okay. Meeting, Captain. Then what are you doing down here? I was just getting ready to go to the funeral. You are not going to Zane's funeral. My offer to give the eulogy still stands. I think I, I would like to do it myself. I just hope that I can get through it without breaking down. Oh, let Mac handle it. You're under a whole lot of stress as it is, you know. All right, I'll think about it, I promise. No, 
In any case, we'll all gather at our house after the service. You're so wonderful. Thank you. Oh, at least we can do sweet. Thanks, Rachel. Okay, I want everybody to sit down and relax. I made all the arrangements at the church. How about Annie, honey? Oh, a car at the airport. I once picking her up. You're wonderful. I don't know what I'd do without you. What about you, honey? How, how are you holding up? I'm fine. I am. You know, Cass and Kathleen have set a date, so we have something to look forward to. Oh, terrific. Zane would be so happy to know you together. You know, the whole time you were missing, Zane was the only person in Big City who never doubted you. She's right, you know that. Did I ever tell you that story about the night that we got caught in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on the highway? We were talking about you, of course. And we got into this huge fight. And he got so angry at me that he rolled the window down and he screamed to all of Bay City. Cass Winthrop loves Kathleen McKinnon and nobody's <laughs> going to tell me otherwise. <laughs> he didn't do that. He did do that. <laughs> In that big booming voice of his. Boy, you should have seen the looks we got. <laughs> Good old scene. Can't believe he's gone. some coffee, Wally. Please. Yeah. Hi, how's everything? Okay. How about your end? Not great. Ever since he heard about Reginald Love, Pops has just been brooding about Mom. <laughs> Told you, didn't I? Yeah, I really didn't think he'd take it this hard. Quite right. Hey, listen, did you get that letter mailed to Cheryl? Oh, shoot, no. I forgot. Look, I'm not gonna have time now. You better do it yourself. Sorry. Well, you should really feel sorry for Cheryl. I mean, uh, stuck away in, in, in that uh, boarding school with the nuns. You remember? It's very depressing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Might be more cheerful than this place right now. You're right. Well, listen, I gotta go change, and then I've gotta run over to the precinct. I have to get our Cecile plan in motion, you know? What? What? Well, what's the Cecile plan? Come in! Adam. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Nice seat. Thanks. I have uh, an appointment with Felicia. Adam, hi. Thanks for coming. I, I think we should get started right away, don't you? Yeah. I I I'd like to talk in the other room, Kathleen. Oh, all right. Well, what was that all about? I'm just not in a social mood. Yeah, me either. Well, see you around. See you later. Well, I have to admit, when you in advance, Reginald Love might come back to Bay City. We had no idea it would lead to such a tragedy, then. One of our best friends killed, I still can't believe it. Eh, frankly, it doesn't surprise me a bit. Not with Reginald Love on the loose. Vince, I think we should close the restaurant for the rest of the day. What do you think? Hey, it's all right with me. Come on, I'll give you a ride home. You can change, then I will take you to the funeral. I don't think that your family or anyone else is going to want me there. I am not going to miss Zane's funeral. You are staying right here. Everyone is saying that my father was responsible for Zane's death. Was he? No, of course not. It's absurd. But since people are talking behind our backs, none of the loves will be represented at this funeral. I was a friend of Zane Lindquist long before I was a love. He's the best friend I ever had, and you are not going to make me miss his funeral. The contract you signed specifically states you'll do nothing to reflect poorly on the love name. This has nothing to do with your father or that contract. A man died. A man who is a dear friend of mine, and I am going to go pay my respects, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. 
Is that what you think? I'm warning you. Oh, well, you're warning me now. And what are you going to do about it, huh? What would your father say if I walked up to him and told him that he had a bastard for a grandson? How would that reflect on the Love family name? Good afternoon, Mr. Corey. Do you have any idea what time it is? Not really. Send her in. I'm a very busy man. I don't like to be kept waiting. Believe me, this is worth it. What is going on here? I figured since you two are in the city together that you might enjoy a little uh, reunion. We've already had one. You disappoint me, Corey. I don't know what you think you can get from this. Some answers. You didn't find the gold you were looking for, did you? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Come on, Cecile. Did it ever occur to you that Reggie here might have snatched it out from underneath you? And then he hired Johann Ludwig to get rid of you because you were the only other one who knew about it? Seems like we're in the same boat together, Cecile. I also have no idea what he's talking about. Oh, I think you do. You brought Johann Ludwig up from South America to stop Cecile. See, he's been planning this for months. And it looks like he's getting away with it, doesn't it? Gosh, it must be the same old story. Reginald wins, you lose. But then, uh, that's the way it's always been, huh? Well, how'd you like to turn the tables this time? Come on, Cecile, this is your chance. Let him have it. the next part of Another World. <clears throat> you had access to old records in Tankir when you found out about the shipments of gold to the Love Stables. That's why you came back to Bay City. Cecile, I know all about this. Well, if you know all about this, then why did you call me in here? Because I thought you and I might be able to help each other out. Oh. Really, Sergeant? If you persist in these fantasies of pots of gold at the end of the rainbow, I'm afraid you may be beyond help. <laughs> well put, my dear. Be careful, Cecile, because you're going to play right into his hand. Oh, I'm not going to play into anybody's hand. You see, I'm leaving Bay City very soon. Running away? No. I just find the summers unbearable. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really must pack. Au revoir. Oh, we'll see each other again. MJ, is that what you call out of uniform? Well, I guess you go for the masculine look, hmm? You were just leaving, Cecile? Yes, I was, actually. I can't wait to get out of this dump. Believe me, Cecile, this is nothing compared to the dumps you're gonna be in. See, the little pink blouse is a good first step. Now, if you could just figure out what to do with that face, you'd be in business. Ciao. You look like you're about to burn a hole right through that newspaper. What's the problem, Scott? No problem. They should cover the burger. Well, aren't you going to eat it, Scott? I'm hungry. Well, wait! What do you say? I don't know, but that guy is really weird, D. Figures. Original love. Boy, that guy's barely even human. If I ever get my hands on that. Oh, Vince, right. Vince. Can't help but Jake think every time I think about my grandfather. You I'm are so going to the funeral and you are going to sit by me. But I don't There think are that... no buts. We all knew Zane, Marley. And nobody, not even your grandfather, is gonna keep us from going to the service. You're right. Thank you for helping me through this. You're welcome. Although I don't know how I'm going to face Felicia. You know, after my talk with Adam, I... I think that maybe I should rework Zane's eulogy. Annie. Oh, 
I have been so worried about you. I'm uh, just fine. And you? I wish I could say I was. I don't know whether to cry or get mad or... Oh, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Why don't you go upstairs and lie down and get some rest? It's been a long trip, okay? Come on, I'll take it. This way. Annie. Tonight, after everything calms down, maybe you and I could, could talk, just the two of us, all right? I'm sure she hates me. Why? Oh, why? She has to. I mean, she must blame me. All the crazy things I got Zane involved in. Oh, Felicia. He loved you. Oh. You brought much joy to him, and he knows that. You know that you're acting just like Cass. You know. Now listen to me, both of you. Neither one of you was responsible for what happened. Yeah, I just hadn't left him at that diner. Now, would you please stop it? Honey, you're pushing yourself too hard. Now you've got to relax. I know, honey. I'm I'm going to go finish my eulogy, okay? Please let one of us give it. No. No, it's... It's too important what I have to say. I have to say it myself. If you could just wait, I, I think you'll understand. Okay? Yeah, why? Clearing this table for 15 minutes. Oh. Oh, I see. Reginald Love. Everywhere I go, that face is staring at me. You ever seen just eyes? Yeah. In a cat, just ready to pounce on a bird. That's Reginald Love in a nutshell. Sends chills up your spine, doesn't it? Well, we'll wrap the garbage in it. It's not good enough for him. Vince, take it easy. Give yourself a break. So let me tell you something, Ada. My daughter Cheryl was brought up in a convent school because that, that man took her mother away from her. Well, it was a long time ago. Forget about it. I can't forget about it. I can't even... I'm afraid to bring Cheryl home because I don't want her mixed up with that monster. Well, just take it easy, okay? <laughs> it's time to close this place up. Okay, uh, I got. I already got a sign written up. Well, look, that'll be good. Okay, it'll be just like family. Yeah, this one family's got to stick together. That's right, Vince. Mary's place closed due to death. No, no, wait. In the family. Michael, I'd like to have a word with you. Oh, yeah? About what? Family business. <laughs> As you know, this uh, property has been in the Love family for generations. Peter, I thought we'd been through all this. Stables belonged to Donna. She sold them to me. That's true. The stables were deeded to Donna in my father's will. But since my father is still alive, that will, of course, becomes null and void. Oh, I see. So you think that makes the sale null and void? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Uh -huh. One can't sell what one doesn't own. Oh, I see. Now, if you'll simply sign the deed back to us, I'll see to it that you get a complete refund of your money. And that includes interest. Oh. Well, Peter, I must say this is very, very generous of you. <laughs> but of course I have... No intention of handing back the stables. I bought them. They're mine. Michael. Yes? Do you really want a costly legal battle? Sure, Peter. You're fine with me. There's nothing I would like better than to get Reginald Love on the witness stand. Ultimately, you will lose. Well, that may be. But with my resources, I can keep that trial hanging on for years. I'd love to know what Big Daddy thinks about that. You're never gonna get 
me into court, so you might as well ask your questions now. I'm in no rush. You're under a restraining order. You don't leave town until I say so. And when do you say so? When I get some answers that I'm happy with. Sounds rather unconstitutional to me. Ah, you can go cry into the courts if you like, for all the good it'll do. I got the DA behind me on this one. The DA? <laughs> I'm shaking in my boot. Just tell me about Gunter Herrmann. Who? Used to be the Love family accountant. Oh, yes. Yes. Rather odd-looking man with a mustache. He kept meticulous records. Did he not? This is his diary. These are the entrance, the entries here for the shipments to the Love stables. Mind if I have a look at that? Just tell me about the shipments. I don't remember. It's been so many years. When exactly? Who knows? I haven't done business with Herman for years. And what was in those deliveries to the stables? Was it the stolen gold? You keep talking about this gold. I have signed sworn statements from people in Tankir. Ah, yes. Tankir. That shipment was probably those beautiful Arabian horses I bought from the king's father. Don't give me that. Well, of course. Now, what else would I have delivered to a stable? I'm sorry you had to go through all this trouble. Sergeant Corey? This is just the beginning. No matter how good your DA is, you can't keep me in Bay City indefinitely. I won't have to. The IRS, Immigration, the World Bank, the SEC, they're all after you. And they'll nail you on something. And soon. They were never able to before. And don't forget all your pals here in Bay City that you've double-crossed. When people figure out that you're alive, they're gonna come after you. I hope they tear you apart. What good would that do you? It'll be worth it just to see you squirm. Goodbye, Sergeant. I'll take you back to your hotel. Thank you, but that won't be necessary. The press is out there. You'll need protection. I can handle the press. Oh, no, I insist. I'll be happy to take you back to your hotel. And we can make a little stop along the way. <laughs> In a few hours, I'll be out of this place, never to return. Oh, I just can't wait till I get to Paris. But you are returning to Tankir, my queen. Well, of course, Robbie. But we will be refueling in Paris. Maybe I'll do a little shopping. Yes, shopping, that should calm my nerves. You've had a difficult time in Bay City, haven't you? <laughs> That's putting it mildly, Robbie. Well. It's all over now. Not quite, Ravi. Not until I get that jacket back from Kathleen McKinnon. It seems Cecilia will still keep her diplomatic immunity. I can't believe that. After all the things she put people through? No, she's not off the hook yet. Not by a long shot. Cecile's gonna get hers, I promise you that. So many people. Yes, well, Zane made a lot of friends here. You okay? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you for coming. It's a time like this when you feel angry and helpless. I know. It's a time to be with the people you love. Thank you. You're right. Absolutely right. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for all of us. Thank you. Felicia, I'm so sorry. Zane was a fine... Yeah. Thank you, Michael. Come here. Me. Okay. He did so much for me. And I wanted so much to be able to pay him back. Oh, Brett, come on, you know Zane. He never wanted anything in return. The giving was what he loved so much. through this yourself not long ago. I know how painful it is. I'm all right. 
Really? Yes. Try and be strong. But one day, you're going to need your friends. And remember, I'll always be there. Just call me. I love you for that. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I know I should say something consoling, you know. But I'm sick. I miss it. Oh, I don't know. Love Don't you know that's consoling? Really, it is. I love you, too. <laughs> it's okay. <sighs> you should pay them. We're all still in shock. I wish there was something I could do for you. Just being here is really so much. Thank all you. Right, well, we are. We're here and we're with you. Thank you. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Oh, Maisie. Oh, honey. I'm so sorry. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, handsome. <laughs> thank you. I don't know where to begin. You know something? I don't want you to worry about it. You're going through a very difficult time yourself right now. I really am very sorry. I know. Vin said that right now, at times like this, you should stick with the people that you love. You do know that you should be together, both of you. Love really is the most important thing. It is. Would you look at her, Wally? <clears throat> How does Felicia do it? She always surprises me. And I have a feeling today's not going to be any different. You're going to be okay? I don't know. I'm saying we're here, you'd help me get through this. <laughs> but he is here. He'll always be here. Felicia, if you want me to give the eulogy, I would be honored. No, honey. Thank you. I'm going to do this one by myself. Thank you. I would first like to thank each and every one of you for being here. You're good friends, and I appreciate it. And before we start, I'd like to remind you that one of the reasons that Zane married me was because he was an unconventional kind of man. <laughs> so, I want you to Fasten up your seat belts, because this is going to be an unconventional kind of funeral. Hello. Ms. Depoliniak? Speaking. Sergeant Richards, Bay City Police. Now, look, really, uh, I've had enough police harassment for one day. I have some papers for you to sign. Uh, you, yeah, right. Well, I'd love to, but I'm on my way to the airport. I'm afraid that before I can let you leave, all parties must sign this agreement. What agreement? Your diplomatic immunity is contingent on your signature. But I thought that... Sorry. Regulations. All parties must sign. Can you explain this to me? I'm sure I wouldn't know, my queen. Why do I get the distinct feeling that you do, Robbie? Closed. Due to death in a family. Oh, no. 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 
from the poem that Zane loved the best. Sunset, an evening star, and one clear call for me. And may there be no moaning at the bar when I put out to sea. Twilight, an evening bell. And after that, the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I Embark. And now Felicia would like to give a very special eulogy for Zane. Because Zane Lindquist was an unusual man, and he was ripped out of my life. on porcelain sinks to stainless steel, fiberglass, and other modern surfaces. Join us each weekday for the continuing story of Another World.